So recently at the European Parliament, everyone, I came across a seemingly innocent uh, Catalan language expo. Um, and that's fine. I thought that was interesting. But then later on when I uh, saw who had turned up finally, Arthur Mas, president of uh, Catalonia, a separatist, I thought, is this just a simple... A language expo, a cultural thing, but why the political heavyweight who happens to be a separatist? See the link below, please, for my view on Catalan independence. Thank you very much for coming here, and uh, let me give the floor to, well, I want to thank first of all Graham Watson, the party leader, Guy Verhofstadt, the group leader, and Artur Mas, Catalan president. Uh, so maybe I invite the, uh, Sir Graham Watson to, to take the floor. Thank you very much for coming, and the floor is yours, Sir Graham Watson. Well, thank you. Thank you, Ramon, and uh, congratulations on organizing such a wonderful exhibition. I'm going to be very brief. As uh, King Henry VIII said to Anne Boleyn, don't worry, I won't keep you long. <laughs> I would just like to say, how important it is that at a time when we think of diversity in other areas, like environmental diversity and so on, biodiversity, we should not forget the importance of linguistic diversity. If language determines thought, then the contribution that every language makes to the culture of humankind is important. I come from a small island off the west coast of Scotland. The Gaelic language is no longer spoken on that island, but it was once upon a time. And it's only through the introduction of broadcasting in the Gaelic language that we have started in areas where it had remained stronger to reinforce that language. Linguistic diversity is essential to the cultural diversity which makes us what we are. And I am very, very proud as a European when I visit Catalonia to see the way that people celebrate and continue the traditions of their language. So congratulations to you all. It's a great honor to be here in the presence of Artur Mas uh, representing Catalonia uh, and to be able to welcome your exhibition. Benvin Gutz. So, uh, dear President Maas, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, first of all, my apologies that I shall not do it in the Catalan language, but be assured, I don't speak Spanish either, so uh, <laughs> that's... Uh, uh, so, I, I am I'm very happy to have the opportunity to celebrate with you today the San uh, Jordi Day, uh, St. George, and also uh, the Catalan uh, language. And as you know, I'm from Ghent, I'm Flemish, I'm Belgian, but most of all, uh, I'm a European, and I think that all these identities, uh, to me, have never been contradictory, and certainly not uh, exclusive. There are people who are saying that uh, for the European Union to be more effective, we need to speak one language. And they are saying, until we don't speak one language, it's impossible to build up uh, the uh, European Union. Well, in my opinion, this is a wrong opinion. It's wrong because in Europe there is no need to limit the use of language. For example, to one or maybe to three or to five. Look, for example, to another great civilization, India. In India there are 387 languages that are used. There are 21 languages that hold official status. And it's possible. It works. And it is one civilization, one continent. And at the same time also the biggest uh, democracy in uh, the world. So in fact, and in my conviction, the fact that we have many languages using, and that we use many languages in the European Union, is an enormous advantage. And uh, it's an asset, in fact, for the European Union. And that's the reason I'm here also today to support the Catalan language. Uh, we know already that the Catalans are the best football players in the world. Don't repeat it, it's what we know it enough. 
on the wines we shall try, we will try uh, Ramon in a few moments, but it's also the ninth most spoken language in the European Union. It's a rich culture, a rich history that has uh, contributed uh, to what uh, Europe is today. And for those who don't know it, take maybe uh, the new book of Norman Davis uh, about uh, forgotten empires and uh, forgotten kingdoms. It's uh, very interesting that the third chapter of that book of Norman Davis, it's about Catalonia uh, and about the crown of Aragon. And it's very interesting uh, to, to know all this, uh, Arthur, about uh, your country. Today, I should when the European Union struggles to reinforce its uh, democratic uh, legitimacy, I think we must be able to reach out to people, we must be able to speak the same language and to give the opportunity to everybody to use his own language in a diverse European Union. So thank you very much, Arthur, for your presence here and also for uh, organizing this uh, very important exhibition uh, I should say, in the center of the Union, in the European Parliament. Thank you. Thank you very much for showing up uh, this uh, afternoon and uh, be together to uh, see this uh, exhibition. If you look around this uh, exhibition, you will see that uh, the Catalan language is not only a matter of history, as I uh, was saying uh, before. It is also a question, it is also a matter of the current times. Catalan, although not being official in the, in the European Parliament, is the, the 22nd most translated language in the world. There are 62,000 websites with, uh, well, in fact, uh, in Catalan. And Catalan is the 19th most language on Twitter. This is not, a, this is not as I said, just a matter of uh, history. History is very important. Identity is uh, also very important. Uh, for us, it is a key point because, uh, as I said before, it has, very, it has been very difficult for Catalans to make the language and the identity survive all, through, uh, all along the times. But it is also a matter of the current times and it is also a matter of the future. And uh, if we look at the future, then it says, Europe is rich in languages, Catalan is a language of Europe. So, looking to the future, we will work as we did before on our language, as a sign of our identity, but also, and this is a very important point, as a contribution to a better world. You said before that this is one of uh, the aims, this is one of the goals of identities, and of course, as uh, languages, as the key element of uh, an identity. Thank you very much, as I said at the beginning of my speech, for coming, for attending this uh, meeting. And uh, as Ramon said before, and this is his commitment, now it's time to taste some Catalan products and to taste some, uh, some, some Catalan wines. Thank you very much.